This morning I heard a familiar case. Did you know that over half of the couples in this country report that they check their bank accounts more often than they have sex? Money issues and sex were just the tip of the iceberg for the young couple who came into court today. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Larry Cochran and Tamisha Brownlee Cochran. The two of you have been together for 10 years, married for six, separated for two. You have a financial matter you would like me to resolve, but before we get that, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Cochran. Why don't you tell me why we're here in divorce court today? I'm just fed up with it all. I'm, I'm tired of it, and I'm tired of uh, being a houseman, the housemaid, and I'm tired of uh, doing everything. Clothes, you name it, everything's everywhere in that house. When you say a houseman, what, what things are you required to do that makes you feel that way? Um, by picking up after her uh, with her clean clothes, washing laundry, but instead, the laundry just be on the ground. And um, anything that we use in the house, it, it's Do it's you everywhere. both work outside the home? Yes. Okay. But you're saying that inside the home, you're the only one working, and, yes. she's n and she never does anything? No, she doesn't do anything. Ms. Brownlee Cochran, what is your response to that? That is the biggest bald-faced lie I've ever heard. <laughs> Are you a good housekeeper, or...? Okay, now, I'm not gonna say I'm a great housekeeper. I mean, right now, I go to school full-time. Um, I do go to work as well, full-time, just like he does. And, of course, I'm a full-time mother, so mm -hmm. I'm juggling three of those things throughout the day. So, do I have enough time to clean up every day by the time he gets home from work? Probably not. But am I cleaning throughout the day? Yes, definitely, because that three-year-old of mine is everywhere. So, I clean up behind her all the time, and especially... I object. No, no objecting. <laughs> Ms. Brownlee Cochran, <laughs> go ahead. So, he would be in the bathroom for three, four hours on a time. He acts like a woman. Probably putting on makeup, all I know. I don't know what he's doing in that really? bathroom. Really? But by the time really? he is done, wow. I'm right after him, telling him, hey, you didn't clean up your hair. Why is your hair still on a, uh, the sink? Why is it still there? So then when he leaves, I'm cleaning that up. By the time he comes, yeah, maybe it might be some, some clothes and stuff in that bathroom, or maybe my mm. toothbrush and toothpaste wow. might be on the sink instead of in Mountains. the mirror. Now, now, now Mr. Cochran, I'm, I am going to say this. If I were to, or if anyone comes and want to leave their spouse, I wouldn't jump out with, yeah, she's messy. You know what I mean? It, 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 and, and it appears to me she's got a full-time job, she's got a little kid, she's in school full-time. Yeah, maybe she is a little messy. You tell me why you want to leave this woman. Uh, she doesn't have time for me, really. Her, her, Explain uh, that to me. She's, uh, like you said, she goes to school full-time, she works full-time, and, of course, my daughter. And she don't even, like, tell me she loves me anymore or anything that that nature. She doesn't show no affection or anything. It's like I'm a robot. I come in, do my thing, go to sleep, go to work. Same routine. Mr. Cochran, let me ask you this. You got a woman who's got a child, she's got a home, she's going to school, she's working full time, and yes, yeah, she's a little busy. Aren't you man enough to suck it up for a little bit till she gets out of school? I mean, do you need that much attention that the fact that she Ha is very busy at this time, um, eh, you can deal with it because you're grown and you get it. Yeah. She's trying to get somewhere better. She's trying to take you along with her. Yeah. Yes, for our family. Do you, does that ever cross your mind? Uh, no, it hasn't. And you have a good point. So, but uh, she's, uh, she's something. But anyway. I don't see divorceable here, really. I don't see, I see a woman who's working all the time, I see a guy who's working and complaining about some small things. Give me divorceable. Well, I can give you something. Well, she's um, very, um, like, if it's not her way, it's the highway. You know what I mean? Like, if I, like, make a mistake or if I uh, make a little flaw and if I say I'm sorry, that's the biggest thing. If I say I'm sorry, she don't want to hear that. That's, that's like she said, it's a load of crap. Do you yeah. allow the man to apologize? People make mistakes, you know. That's very true. And if they apologize, that's the best they can do. I mean, if they, you know, clean up whatever mess they made. Mm -hmm. But why don't you, are, are you not accepting of his humanness? I mean, I've been knowing him for the last 10 years, okay? These 10 years, all I hear is sorry. That's all I hear. 
I'm tired of hearing, hearing sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I'm are sorry you, for that. Are you that. a perpetually sorry brother? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah some, part time, sometimes. But when I try it's to change, when I try to it's change tiring. it, like and try to make it better, she still outweighs the bad over it. Well, what, what are you always so sorry about? Like when I forget sometimes to to give my daughter uh, medicine, or sometimes when I. Uh, you, you know. forget to give your daughter her medicine? Yeah. And she has really bad heartburn, just like he does. And with that being said, Judge, he takes his heartburn medicine faithfully. Faithfully. How can you forget to medicate your child? Um, uh, working a lot, but, yeah. Ooh. I work too, Judge. Yeah. yeah. And I go to school, Judge. Stuff be on the ground still. <laughs> you don't work you that You worried hard. about stuff on the ground and your and daughter's daughter is sick and you can't give her your medicine? You got a lot of nerve. <laughs> I was about ready to start fussing at her about not giving you any sex, but now I see what her issue is. He wanted it two and three times every day. Every day. Two or three times a day? Kind of, sort of? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. That's <laughs> <is> too much. <laughs> it is a lot. Divorce isn't easy. If you need help with your breakup, call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. So, Mr. Cochran, you have been uh, distraught or upset about the amount of sex you get, but you say when you complained about it, you got a very unusual response from your wife. Why don't you tell me what that was? The unusual response was, well, since I'm not giving you attention or enough affection to uh, see other women. And um, uh, she told me this throughout the months and the year. It got to years. And it was to the point that I started believing her because I felt like a less of a man. I felt like, well, hey, you know what I'm saying? You showing everybody else love and affection and you telling me to see somebody else. Um, that made me feel low and it made me feel um, like I was nothing. Ms. Brownlee Cochran, did you actually tell your man, your husband, if you want some love and affection, find another woman? Unfortunately, yes, I did say that. Now, I have a really good excuse, I believe, for me saying that. For the last four or five years, I have submitted to this man whenever he wanted it, how he wanted it, when he wanted it, whatever. I am tired of him abusing my body. So I said, well, hey, we need to start making a scheduled time to make love, okay? So that wasn't good enough for him. He wanted it two and three times every day. Every day. Two or three times a day? Kind of, sort of? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> It is a lot. It is I mean, lot. I mean, too much is, is, is a value judgment that <laughs> only the two parties involved can, can, can place on it. Right. Did you understand the nature of how your high sex drive was making it difficult for her? Not that you're wrong, because your sex drive is what it is. You right. can't be blamed for that. But did you understand that they were uh, disjointed, that you weren't, you weren't on the same level with respect to your needs? Yeah, I understand that, but what I don't understand is when she's saying that, she's like she's either tired or I don't even get to get to that far to the to the third base. Cause at you should all. be asking me when I'm tired. Why don't you ask me when I got a spunk of energy? Well, I tried that. When you do have spunk of energy, I be <laughs> I be singing to you. I be doing a whole bunch of stuff for you. I is he romantic and and, and and you fail to at least give a oh, you know God. give it a shot? Romantic? Him. <laughs> I guess if we can put this on a scale, his romanticity is probably a two. Wow, really? Are, yeah. are you light on the romance? I'm smooth on it. I'm, I'm, light. More, I'm more romantic than he will ever be. Every birthday, I'll put out some roses, make him some hot bubbly bath water, put some candles in there. Does she do that? Well, she did that like two years ago. <laughs> and when we were dating. She ain't do it now. <laughs> okay, maybe not now. Because you fall asleep everywhere you go. First of all, Ms. Cochran, how foolish of you to tell your man to go find somebody else. 
you know, while you're in, I mean, I mean, that doesn't serve your purposes at all. You need to, you know, work something out, you know, mm -hmm. you know, we'll try a little this, try a little that, and, you know, give me a day off on Tuesday, maybe, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> you know, you, you get creative with it, but you don't get frustrated <laughs> and, 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 and shove them out the door for your own well-being. Mm -hmm. not, not, not just the marriage's well-being, but for your own well. I, I know you got sick of it and you said a thing. You know what I mean? And people say stuff when they're exhausted. She didn't mean that. You know she didn't mean that. You shouldn't have gotten your ego all tore up about it. She's something. I'm I don't see it. You don't see it? No. And, and I wish you could show it to me. The no. problem is, Other Judge, is... the problem is I am headstrong, okay? I'm very motivated. I'm very energetic. When I want something, I'm gonna go get it, point blank. It's not and me. if he can't do it for me, I'm gonna do it myself. What are we talking about? <laughs> she talk, she's Basically talking about saying, all in herself. Basically saying, like saying, I want more money. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I go ahead, I start a business, and go move for it. He wanted to still stay in the same situation. I he, gotcha. He's, you're a go-getter, and you're saying that he's just complacent and doesn't, and, and, and doesn't assist you in that guard. Yes. I gotcha. I gotcha. You say that Mr. Cochran is both selfish and cheap. I could ask him for five or ten dollars. He'll say, you don't deserve it. She, I feel that she don't deserve it because she don't put effort in being uh, a wife uh, to me. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Ms. Brownlee Cochran, you say that Mr. Cochran is both selfish and cheap. Why don't you explain mm. those comments mm. to me? Mm. Mm. Yes, that is so true. This man, so when I first wasn't working, I was a stay-at-home mother, okay, for the first three years of our daughter's life because we wanted to make sure we watch her, okay? So that means I have no money. That means he's the breadwinner over here. So when I need something, I need it for her or for myself. I could ask him for five or $10. He'll say, you don't deserve it. I'm like, really? Why don't I deserve it? I watch your daughter 24 seven. I go to school. I'm doing everything you want for me to do probably other than the sex thing. Why don't I deserve it? Oh, you're lazy. I come here, the house is all dirty. Look at our room, look at your clothes, look at this, look at that. I work my butt off for this, so I deserve it. That's what he says to me. Mr. Cochran, would you, you want to respond to that? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, some of it's true, but she, I feel that she don't deserve it because she don't put effort in being uh, a wife uh, to me. And um, she thinks it's funny, like when I be like trying to clean her mess on my day off or when I'm at, doing work, going to work, almost being late for work. I'm gonna be hurting herself, hurting myself over her he high heel shoes and uh, picking up her mess. And she thinks it's funny. And now my daughter's taking that habit. And she even shows attitude. Mm -hmm. Who shows attitude? You and my daughter shows, gives me lip because she's trying to uh, be you, like you, I guess. Does your wife give you lip? Yeah, all the time. What kind of lip does she give you? You're, you're a big boy, uh, you'll be all right. Yeah. Pat, pat yourself on the back, you good? You don't need, Ms. You don't Mr. Cochran, I guess I, I, the, the part I don't understand is no matter what goes on, you and I end up talking about her not picking up her clothes. And I just don't see, you know, the, people have flaws, you know what I mean? And I don't pick up mine either. <laughs> it's just, you claim great inadequacies mm -hmm. on her part, and I'm not seeing it. Okay. And I, and I, and I want you to. Is it about her attitude? Tell me about it her is, attitude. How does she come across? What did she say? She's, she's uh, cold-hearted, and I feel she don't have no emotion. Give me an example. I can't, okay. I can't picture it. She'd tell me um, to uh, go get her something to eat, and I'd go get her something to eat. If I made a slight mistake over it, she'd give me hell over it. You know, she'd tell me, you didn't do good. You didn't, you didn't tell him. No, you didn't. That's not good enough. Go back out there and get it. She won't just, you know, say so I'll you went out and got fast food and they got it wrong yeah, and, and you bring it back yeah, and she's she, claiming that you didn't yeah, pay enough attention at the window. To, yeah. Is, does that kind does. of thing happen at your house? Yes, it does. It, it does. And why does it? Let's put an example here. I'll ask for um, a cheeseburger and some French fries with no salt. He'll go to the window, 
He don't he don't ask for the don't ask for the salt. So I still have some salty French fries. Well, don't. I don't want salty French fries. I asked for no salt. What's so hard about getting that right? So when he brings it back to me, I eat it, and I'm like, well, I'm eating salty French fries. You messed yeah. up. Is that really that important? <laughs> it is that important. I hate salt. I hate salt. I don't like salt on She's a lot very of things. Picky. And I feel that if he got it wrong, he can easily go fix the mistake. Could it be that the, the fast food place messed up? Of course, they did mess up. And it's his duty to make sure they fix it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a whole lot going on in divorce court that people want to talk about. If you have something you want to say, join us on Twitter at Divorce Court or jump on our Facebook page and see what everybody's talking about on there. Sometimes you people get heated. Don't miss it. Mr. and Mrs. Cochran, mm -hmm. I think I only saw about 10% of what's wrong. And I don't know if we, it, it was just time constraint, you were unable to present it. I don't know if it, you don't feel fluent about it, that, that it's not easy to cross your lips. So I'm seeing Nikki Picky, but this is the tip of a very large iceberg. So I'm not gonna try to chip away at it and see if you can, guys can continue to sail on, because I realize that is not available to you. I will say this to you, however. You have a three-year-old. It is incumbent upon both of you to treat each other with the utmost respect, love, and care. And I do mean respect, love, and care. Because to the extent that your child has have to have two separate homes, two separate situations, she's got to know that the two people in her life that she relies on the most care for one another. You know what I mean? You ain't got to be crazy about one another. But you really have got to make a point of being kind and caring to one another, okay? Saying the relationship is over, you get, you you don't get to be mad anymore, because you done got rid of each other. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Talk about Amen. the uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Cochran. You want me to order him to pay you four hundred and thirteen dollars a month until sometime in 2017 to pay off the balance on a 2009 car and tell me. Uh, what your arrangement was with him with respect to this car and why you believe I should award you that amount of money. Before we were separated, he bought that car for me as an anniversary gift. Mm -hmm. Okay? Whose name is the car in? It's in both of our names, okay. but I'm, I'm on the top lead, or the top holder. So basically, um, I want him to continue paying that because that's a gift to me. I mean, he wanted me to have it. He said I deserved it. I feel that he should finish paying it off. Okay. Uh, do you have any paperwork about how much the lo how much is left on the loan, the amount of the loan, the actually yeah, I got a promissory letter that he wrote to me. Okay. Mr. Cochran, what do you want to say with respect to this $413 a month she wants me to award? Um, I'm going to do it because I, I love my daughter and I want, I want her to have the best. Well, aren't you something? Yeah. Wonderful. That's a good thing to say. Now, I ain't gonna take his word for it. I'm gonna, don't worry about it. I'm gonna make a order. This is unusual for a married couple to do this. I just, you know, it doesn't matter anymore because this man is already stipulated to the payment and I'm gonna require him as a matter of law. But he said, I, I Larry, Larry Cochran will continue to make payments on $413 for the car until paid off, which will be February of 2017, and that's the date I'm gonna use. If I refuse, then I will be ordered to pay child support. So you said, you know, it's either this or, or child support order. Yes. yes you I know, did. even after 2017, your child will need support. You gonna still be there? Yep. Do the right thing. Yep. But I just want to reinforce that and make it easy for him to see that baby and make it easy for him to be kind and generous mm. with you because you've got to, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, make it smooth. I tried. Make mm. it smooth. I, I'm still trying. Don't be mad about old stuff. Just, it's over with. So done with it. So yesterday's news. So there is an order uh, in favor of Mrs. Cochran for $413 per month until February of 2017. It is so ordered. Larry and Tamisha got a lot of things wrong during their marriage, but they got one thing right, and that's the one thing I want to applaud them for. They decided, even though they weren't going to be together, they were going to be good parents together. And that is the most important thing. <laughs>